Good evening everyone and welcome to Raina Mo's Designs. And today we're going to be talking about wines. What type of wines to serve with which foods. So if this sounds like a tutorial that would interest you, please keep watching. Now, as you guys are aware, this is the fifth and final one in the series that I have for basic entertaining. And this, of course, is actually not an alcoholic beverage. It's simply pineapple juice with some strawberries decorated up because, you know, I don't really drink. But I wanted to share with you guys just the basics about wines because wines is such a vast category. And if you want more information on it, then I can make that a continuing series here on the channel. Just make sure that you put it down in your comments below. So the first thing we're going to start off with is whites. And I'm going to share with you two different types of whites. The first white that I'm going to share with you is Chardonnay. And the reason why I'm going to share Chardonnay with you is because everywhere you go, everyone always has Chardonnay. And it's typically priced very economically all the way up to one that's very, very expensive. It really and truly just depends upon you and your tastes. With Chardonnays, the simple thing is all whites are typically served chilled. Reds are typically served at room temperature. And the reasons for that is you want to be able to kind of downplay some of the aromatics that are in white wines and that's the reason why they serve them chilled. And typically the proper way to chill your wine is in a bucket of ice because you don't want it blazing cold. Some people actually have wine coolers which have the different levels chilled to the temperature that they want that particular wine because you may want your Pinot Grigio a little bit more chilled or a little less chilled than your Chardonnay. So if you have one of those fancy technology coolers, kudos to you. If you don't, a bucket of ice is perfect to chill your white wines because like I said, you do not want it too cold. You just need it to have a little bit of a chill to it. Now, Chardonnays. Chardonnays are a wonderful white wine and they pair so well because of their light flavor with light dishes such as your fish courses. If you are serving any kind of seafood, you want to reach for a Chardonnay. And it's whichever Chardonnay is your favorite. Okay, all of them pair very well with fish. The next white that we're gonna talk about is Pinot Grigio. The next wine that we're going to talk about is a Pinot Grigio. My absolute favorite Pinot Grigio, as I've mentioned before, is Santa Margarita. But there's so many out there that are just as delicious and tasty and different price points. You really just have to try out which wines you enjoy and which wines wash very well over your palate. With the Pinot Grigio, this also, it seems like most white wines go well with seafood. However, I wanted to explain a little bit of a difference between a Chardonnay and a Pinot Grigio when it comes to seafood. Because of the beautiful flavor of Pinot Grigios, I always prefer to have it with something that is light in seafood flavor, such as scallops, um, prawns. But if I'm going to have Chardonnay, my meal is going to be typically a heavier fish, although fish in general is considered light, which would be my salmon. Um, that's what I would serve a Chardonnay with. Salmons, also crab. I would have Chardonnay with certain types of crabs. Lobster, lobster has a beautiful sweetness to it. You could do a Chardonnay, but I prefer Pinot Grigio. So that's kind of the difference. The lighter the seafood or the fish, you want to air towards your Pinot Grigio. The heavier seafood that you serve, you want to go with the Chardonnay. Next, I want to go over some wines that are very much new, and these are reds that are very much new and trendy to the point where some people, you either love it or you hate it. 
and those would be Shiraz or Malbox. And this is a Malbox, okay? It's a very rich flavor when it comes to a red wine. Spicy notes throughout. And for some can be bitter. It really just depends on your color palette and how it washes over, oh, not your color palette, your taste palette, and how it washes over your taste buds. But they are very, very good, especially here in Texas, because they pair so well with Asian food as well as barbecue. And that's on the spicy side. When you think of foods that are spicy, you want to serve a Malbec or a Shiraz. There's no other wine that complements that type of food than these red wines. Now the next red wine that I'm going to actually discuss with you is a red wine called a Beaujolais. And this is a Burgundy wine. It is very similar to Pinot Noir, but its flavor is a little bit sweeter to me. Um, but it is a light red wine. You have some red wines that are just so harsh to the palate, to my palate. Um, and this particular wine is not one. Now this bottle was gifted to me by a very dear friend um, named Kim. And I'm holding on to this bottle because it's, it's a nice bottle of wine. So um, this bottle of wine is so good and so tasty that it can be served practically with anything which isn't typical with red wines typically with red wines you want to serve it with meats like your beefs and your porks this one is actually light enough that you could serve it with fish um, although I would not but you can um, it really depends as with all these wines on your taste palate so um, this is just really, really quick information about reds and whites. And the final wine that I'm going to be bringing about is just like the end of your meal, you have a dessert. There are also dessert wines. And this is the dessert wine that I want to actually share with you guys. This particular uh, dessert wine was actually, is actually made in Africa, but this is a Moscato. This is a Moscato de Oscar and it is absolutely delicious i've tasted it twice this is my last bottle so i'm holding on to it for a special occasion to, in which to crack it open and share it with friends but there are so many different types of dessert wines there are people who serve sherry after dessert um, because that's typically a dessert wine and then you have heavier liqueurs that will be served as cordials uh for the dessert course so we can go into that in another uh series if you guys are interested in it please remember down in the comments below anything that you would like me to cover on the series of wines i would definitely do a series for you guys on that if you would be interested so i hope you guys enjoyed the information that i've provided about reds and whites and the little bit that i've touched on with dessert wines if you did definitely give me a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't subscribed because you never know what you're going to get on this channel but whatever you get on this channel will always be useful so make sure you share these videos with your friends and your loved ones and most importantly have an absolutely wonderful evening good night